Hey everyone, welcome to another video here on White Coats and Corgis. Today I wanted to make a video addressing a really great question I got on my Instagram DM a couple of weeks ago. This pre-med student reached out to me and she wanted advice about how to know when her personal statement is ready to submit to the medical schools. And I told her a very abbreviated version of what I'm about to say in this video, which is it's impossible to know when it's ready. <laughs> Unfortunately, with writing like this it it really feels like you can keep editing forever right you can keep revising you can keep going and I also felt that it was really difficult to know when it was done when it was complete and ready to be submitted and so the best piece of advice that I can give is actually a piece of advice that I received when I was in this position myself and that is to really look at examples of other personal statements that were accepted into the medical schools that I was interested in. And if my essay compared to those in any way, right, the, the quality of writing was just as good, the storyline was just as good, you know, the descriptive words, the qualities it was showing, if I could see parallels between those essays that got in and mine, that's how I would know that my essay was done and I could just leave it alone and go ahead and move on with my life and submit it to the medical schools. And so I decided to show you guys an example of a really, really good medical school personal statement that I personally love. And hopefully you guys can use that as an example. Um, this particular student got their essay accepted at Harvard. And so I thought that this was a really good school to use because a lot of people are interested in Harvard and want to go there. So you can look at this personal statement and know that this student was successful and was able to get into that medical school. So I found this personal statement example on the website Perspective Doctor. Um, if you don't know what that website is, it's a really, really helpful site. I would definitely bookmark it now. Um, it has a lot of free resources for pre-meds, including like MCAT score calculators, uh, secondary essay databases, podcasts, different video series. It's pretty awesome, so lots of great resources for you there. And this particular article has four different medical school personal statement examples. So if you don't like the one that I shared today, there are three others that are written in completely different styles about completely different topics. So definitely go check out that article. I will link it in the description if you want to read the other essays as well. And so before we get started, I wanted to really quickly share some of the tips that the article has because I think they are really good and really helpful, especially if you are in the stage where you're trying to figure out what to write about and kind of outline what your essay is going to be about. Um, the first tip they give is sticking to your real life experiences. And this is one of the biggest tips that I have for pre-meds when I'm asked about this on social media as well. And that is because I think a lot of pre-meds have this idea that they have to tell some very like dramatic or fantastical story in their personal statement. And when I've talked to physicians who've been on admissions committees about this, they really don't care about that too much from my experience speaking with them. Um, from what I have heard, the most important thing is really just taking your real life experiences and telling it in a very fun or impactful, emotional, memorable way. And so the story itself doesn't have to be anything super unique or crazy, but I think that the way you tell the story should be really reflective and really show that you have thought a lot about the experiences that you talked about and that they meant a lot to you as a person. And so I think that that is probably my number one tip when writing a personal statement is really stick to the stuff you know and stick to your true story, but think about how you can best reflect on that and really use what you have to show some great qualities that would translate into you being a really good doctor. All right, so now that we've reviewed the general tips and advice for starting your personal statement, I am now going to read the personal statement example that got a student accepted into Harvard Medical School. So here we go. Countless visits to specialists in hope of relief left me with a slew of inconclusive test results and uncertain diagnoses. We cannot do anything else for you. After 12 months of waging a war against my burning back, aching neck, and tingling limbs, hearing these words at first felt like a death sentence, but I continued to advocate for myself with medical professionals. 
A year of combating pain and dismissal led me to a group of compassionate and innovative physicians at the Stanford Pain Management Center. Working alongside a diverse team, including pain management specialists and my PCP, I began the long, nonlinear process of uncovering the girl that had been buried in the devastating rubble of her body's pain. From struggling with day-to-day activities like washing my hair and sitting in class to thriving as an avid weightlifter and zealous student over the span of a year, I realized I'm passionate about preventing, managing, and eliminating chronic illnesses through patient-centered incremental care and medical innovation. A few days after my pain started, I was relieved to hear that I had most likely just strained some muscles, but after an empty bottle of muscle relaxers, the stings and aches had only intensified. I went on to see 15 specialists throughout California, including neurologists, physiatrists, and rheumatologists. Neurological exams, MRIs, blood tests, all inconclusive. Time and time again, specialists dismissed my experience due to ambiguous test results and limited time. I spent months trying to convince doctors that I was losing my body. They thought I was losing my mind. Despite these letdowns, I did not stop fighting to regain control of my life. Armed with my medical records and a detailed journal of my symptoms, I continued scheduling appointments with the intention of finding a doctor who would dig deeper in the face of the unknown. Between visits, I researched my symptoms and searched for others with similar experiences. One story on Stanford Medicine's blog, Young Woman Overcomes Multiple Misdiagnoses and Gets Her Life Back, particularly stood out to me and was the catalyst that led me to the SPMC. After bouncing from doctor to doctor, I had finally found a team of physicians who would take the profound toll of my pain on my physical and mental well-being seriously. Throughout my year-long journey with my care team at the SPMC, I showed up for myself even when it felt like I would lose the war against my body. I confronted daily challenges with fortitude. When lifting my arms to tie my hair into a ponytail felt agonizing, YouTube tutorials trained me to become a braiding expert. Instead of lying in bed all day when my medication to relieve nerve pain left me struggling to stay awake, I explored innovative alternative therapies with my physicians. After I was fed up with the frustration of not knowing the source of my symptoms, I became a research subject in a clinical trial aimed at identifying and characterizing pain generators in patients suffering from mysterious chronic pain. Reflecting on the support system that enabled me to overcome the challenges of rehabilitation, I was inspired to help others navigate life with chronic pain in a more equitable and accessible way. Not everyone has the means to work indefinitely with a comprehensive care team, but most do have a smartphone. As a result, I partnered with a team of physicians and physical therapists at the University of California, San Francisco to develop a free mobile application that guides individuals dealing with chronic pain through recovery. Based on my own journey, I was able to design the app with an understanding of the mental and physical toll that pain, fear, and loss of motivation can take on patients struggling with chronic pain. Having features like an exercise bank with real-time form checker and an AI-based chatbot to motivate users, address their concerns, and connect them to specific healthcare resources, our application helps 65 of the 100 pilot users experience a significant reduction in pain and improvement in mental health in three months. My journey has fostered my passion for patient-centered incremental medicine and medical innovation. From barely living to thriving, I've become a trailblazing warrior with the perseverance and resilience needed to pursue these passions and help both the patients I engage with and those around the world. So obviously this was a really great personal statement. It did a lot of the things that the tips suggested and I think that's what really made this story so unique and so memorable. And I think they really did a good job of sort of putting everything together and tying it into why they want to become a physician. I think that's really important to just make sure that every story you tell really demonstrates the qualities needed to become a good doctor and shows your passion and why you want to become one in the first place. So this This essay does a fantastic job of doing that. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to see more examples, there are three others in the same article. And if you just Google personal statement example, there are hundreds out there on the internet for you to look at. And so I think that's one of the best ways to really feel comfortable that your personal statement is at its best, is to really just understand what else is out there, see what other people are doing, and hopefully you can create an essay that is of the same caliber, just telling your story in your own unique way. 
So I hope this was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this. I'm always happy to answer. And uh, let me know if there's anything you would like to see next. I'm going to be creating a lot of new content over the next couple months. So if there's any questions you have about the process of applying to medical school or just what it's like to be a medical student, kind of how to get through this process, let me know. I would love to create more videos with my social media followers in mind because ultimately this is all for you and I want to make sure that the content I put out there is what people actually want to hear and what they're going to be interested in. So let me know if you have any feedback. Any at all is welcome. Have a great day, you guys, and I will see you in the next video.